Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jessica, and if you are new here, I'm so happy that you're here. On this channel, um, I am a speech language pathologist, so we just kind of talk about all things speechy and pathology y. <laughs> Um, I want to start this video with a little bit of, st of a story time. If you um, have been around for a little bit, you know that I like to keep things really real here. This is an authentic, real place. I'm a real SLP, still working um, in all full disclosure. I do work part time, which is why I have a little bit of time to do some of um, these things. But I do still work, do still see students. Okay, so story time. Uh, I came up to school last week. It's the beginning of the school year while I'm filming this. And I went to work in my room and I filmed that video. Um, it was my like first day back working in my room. And in that video, I mentioned that there was some funky stuff on my desk. And there was like some fur and some crumbly things and it was kind of gross. And so I just got a Lysol wipe and I cleaned it up and I went about my business and tried to not think about it. So when I came back in the next time, there was still this crumbly stuff all over my desk. And I actually even saw it in the floor of the bathroom that's by my office. So it's like a almost metal-ish on one side and like this brownish on the other. Okay. And it's all over like my area where the offices and classrooms by me are and in that bathroom. And like I said, at first I just cleaned it up and was like, okay, I'm just going to ignore this. But I was a little bit nervous that it was like a nest or some something of like a rodent, a mouse, a squirrel, something gross had gotten in my office over the summer and was nesting because of that and the funky fur. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I hate having to go and talk to administrators. I would rather hide in my office all day long and do nothing. But at this point, because I'm seeing this all over my section and in, in my office after I've cleaned it up, um, I go to my administrator and I'm like, hey, okay, here's what's going on. Do you know what this is? Like this funky stuff. And I take her in my office, told her what happened. And she starts um, looking in my office for a squirrel is what she was looking for. And she, okay, I don't usually have people in my office. I know I've showed it on here and I have told you this is my real speech pathology, speech therapy room where I see kids. And like, it's not super clean because I don't want to keep all that stuff at home. So I keep it up here and it's kind of cluttered. And so I was kind of embarrassed that she was poking in all the corners of my speech room where I have stashed all of my therapy materials and my books. And it's really not organized because who has time for that? Okay, so that's the story. Because I was so embarrassed that my administrator was poking around in the corners of my room looking for rodents, um, I decided to clean my office today. Well, mostly just my junk corner. So I'm gonna take you along for a ride as I clean out my junk corner and we'll talk about some stuff. Um, and I also wanted to say that we did figure out what the um, funky aluminum-y brown stuff is. And it turns out that they had the air conditioners worked on, the air ducts worked on this summer. And all of these papery things are flying out of the vents when um, the air turns on. So that's why I don't know exactly what it is. Hopefully I didn't just touch something really gross. Um, but it is not a rodent in my speech room. It is gunk coming from the air conditioning ducts. And I'm guessing that the fur came on my desk also from the air conditioning duct because there is an air duct right above my desk. Um, so all that to say, because of that, I am cleaning my speech room today and I'm taking you along with me. So have fun, see my junk and let me know below. <laughs> I would love to know what your junk corner has and your speech room and when the last time you cleaned it out was. So drop a comment letting me know that. And I will start cleaning. Hello, my speech therapist friends. Thanks for hanging out with me today while I clean out my junk corner in my speech room. Uh, you can see that it's pretty cluttered right now. Um, surely I am not the only speech pathologist who has a junk corner that looks this embarrassing. And yeah, so 
it's kind of a mess, but I'm glad you're here. And instead of just kind of like talking about what I'm doing as I'm filming it, I thought it might be interesting to share a little bit about my speech pathology journey. Um, because we are starting a new year, a new school year at least. Um, I'm filming this in August and I kind of wanted to just reflect on growth that I know I have had as a speech pathologist and as I'm kind of sharing my stories, I want you to reflect on your growth as a speech pathologist and think about how you've gotten a little bit better every year. Um, I know that growth is such an important thing. That's how we get better. You know, we come out of graduate school and we start as a CF and we know nothing. We think we know things and maybe we don't know nothing. I mean, that's not true. And you know, sometimes maybe we come out of graduate school and we think we know everything and are in for a very rude awakening um, where we kind of realize, ooh, I actually don't know as much as I thought I did. And that's okay. That was probably me, to be perfectly honest. I have humbled a lot. I think I've talked about this in some of my other videos is how I was probably a little bit more arrogant than I should have been coming out of graduate school and becoming a CF. There are others who come out of graduate school and they are wise enough to realize there is a lot they don't know and they've got a lot to learn and those people are like way wiser than I was when I was that at that point in my speech therapy journey. <laughs> I feel weird calling it a th speech therapy journey because it sounds like a health journey, but it is a journey. And just like, you know, kind of like being on a, a health journey or a wellness journey, speech pathology is a journey. We are constantly learning and getting better and adapting. So I wanted to kind of go through a few things. I have been a speech pathologist, I believe this is my 11th year I'm starting right now. I could not think of 11 things I learned over 11 years, but I have actually reflected on this every year on what did I learn this last year? What was I being taught, you know, or what was I just kind of naturally happening in my daily life that I learned and got better at? Okay, so the first year is kind of obvious. That would be learning just the basics of how to do an evaluation by myself. You know, things like writing the goals, things like getting students to pay attention, things like being efficient during my evaluation, not just looking at the protocols, but also looking at non-standardized forms as well and getting better at that whole process. And then I will also was getting better at the same time at therapy because again, therapy is, I remember learning in graduate school, it is a science and it is an art and it truly is because we have the science that we are trying to apply you know the evidence-based practices and all of the you know official data driven stuff that's just kind of shoved down our throats all the time and then there's the art of how do i get a child to pay attention to me and what i'm doing how do i get this child to do what i want them to do and I really was just learning the fundamentals. Like there was nothing glamorous, beautiful. I did a lot of flashcards. I did a lot of drills. It was not super fun, but I also think that's fairly standard, at least when I started as a therapist, because that was right as like TPT and all of these things were emerging that we didn't have influencers or Instagram or YouTube videos. We had our mentors like our supervisors who were not around all the time and whatever we learned in graduate school and then we had ourselves and if you had a bad supervisor like i mentioned in one of my videos about my cf experience which i did have a bad supervisor i had one who was great and one who was not then you're really on your own and so i really that first year it was just me really kind of taking in everything and getting better all at once the next year, I feel like as I continue to get better at doing these evaluations and doing therapy, um, I got better at report writing. 
I actually feel like I'm a pretty good report writer and some days if I'm in the right mood, I actually really like to sit down and write a really good report. And my parents who work with me get very, very detailed reports that have, you know, as much information as I can put in them. And I actually focus on my reports on um, making it very parent friendly instead of, you know, speech pathologist friendly. I really want it to be parent friendly. So I would say I spent another year getting really good at, at writing reports. I was put that second year, um, well, actually, technically, it was my third year on an autism evaluation team for my district. And I also, the next year after that was put on an early childhood assessment team. And I loved it. I love assessing students. And I loved writing those reports. I would have a whole day, I would turn off the lights in my office, and I would just like write reports. And I may do a video on that at some point, on my tips and tricks for writing good evaluations so that you don't fall behind. The next year, or maybe around the same time, I also was placed in a classroom that was for students with autism. It was a kindergarten classroom, and it worked on having some components of a self-contained classroom, but also helping to push them out into gen ed when they were able to. And the teacher in that classroom was amazing. She was one of my best friends. I hung out in that room anytime I had free time. She was great, and she taught me so much about working with kids with autism. And I will never be able to repay her for how much she taught me for managing behaviors. And I've always loved neurodivergent and autistic individuals. I, since day one of graduate school, I've loved it. But she was just phenomenal. So I had a lot of time where I was just kind of learning the ropes as a speech pathologist, as a new speech pathologist. And then as I got further into this speech pathologist journey, I started to gain more confidence. And one year, I really feel like I spent a lot of time just improving my confidence in my interaction with parents. And not just like, the, like I really would hide from parents in my office. I did everything I could to avoid parents. If I saw one walking down the hallway at school, I would run into the bathroom or I would hide in my office until they passed. And I don't do that anymore. And I would dread phone calls. I was so scared of them. Or I would dread IEP meetings. But I have gotten to the point now where I actually kind of enjoy talking to parents and showing them, hey, I can help you. Let, let me show you how I can help you. Let's make a plan together. Let's work together. We really are a team and I want to be part of a team with parents now. So there was like a whole year of just growth and confidence. Part of that, that it evolved from this confidence with parents, and I probably spent another year developing this, was parent communication and getting better at writing more details in my progress report. But also, I created some parent handouts and I created speech folders, and I got really good at letting parents, like giving them suggestions of things to work on. And I get such good feedback on these handouts that I made. And I wish I had made them during COVID because they would have been so helpful at that point, but I didn't have them during COVID. So I made them after. And they just really are great at summarizing for parents. Okay, here is um, a speech therapy tool that you can use. Um, here is a strategy. Here is how you do it. Here's what it looks like. Let's reflect on how we can do that in your daily life, how you can implement this speech therapy strategy in your daily life. So I spent a whole year developing those and getting really good at explaining to parents how they can help their child at home. And then the next year, I got really good at lesson planning. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I hate lesson planning. I've always hated it. But to have a good speech therapy session, it really does need a good plan. I used to be known for, like I said, that first year, just pulling out cards and a game. And there was even one of my um, graduate school supervisors who worked in the schools, that's literally what she did every week. She pulled out a board game, she pulled out her drill cards. So that's what I learned was what this one particular speech pathologist did. And I learned over these several years of developing myself as a speech pathologist, um, 
how to make a good lesson plan. And I have also discovered that in particular, I preschool is my jam. I love working with preschool kids. And so I have a whole curriculum. I don't know if curriculum is the right word, but it's 36 weeks of themes that were made for my preschool students in mind. And I did a video on that a couple weeks ago too. And you'll see all year long as I'm showing you what is going on in my speech room that I use these themes every week. So they're done, they're prepped. I already know what themes, what sequences, and what I'm generally going to be targeting as already. And I've made copies of them and I put them in my little paper thing and they're ready to go. And I don't have to think about it anymore. I will get into each therapy because remember, each therapy session is an art and a science. So I will adapt it to whatever my student needs, but I've got the themes planned out already and I've got my books planned out already and it is one of the most helpful things I ever created. Okay, but let's talk about this year. What do I want to work on? What goal or what lesson have I learned, I guess, from last year that I wanna carry forward into improving this year as a speech pathologist? And it's documentation. It's not glamorous. I had um, a situation come up recently where I was regretting, I had sufficient documentation but I was regretting that I had not organized it well. I had maybe not been as thorough as I should have been. And so I'm setting a goal for myself that I really want to do better about being really thorough with all of my documentation, not just sufficient, but enough that should I ever need to go back because um, this situation had happened years ago. Um, but if I should need to go back years ago where I don't even remember the details anymore, everything will be waiting for me to pull it back up and I can refresh myself and have it ready to go. So those are some things that I have learned over the years as a speech pathologist and that is what I'm going to be working on this year. I would love to hear if you have anything that you're working on or maybe something, a lesson that you learned last year or something you plan to improve on this year. And if you wanna leave me a comment, I would have so much fun reading that and other people would too. It would be so helpful to all of us to see what we could grow in. So with that, I am going to say, thanks for watching me clean my room. I hope you enjoyed a nice cleaning video and enjoyed listening to me chat a little bit. And I will see you in my next video real soon.